Guys, springtime is just around the corner, or we can at least hope so. But that means lemon desserts. And I figured out a delicious keto lemon meringue pie. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a sweet tooth. And I'm here to show you all the tips and tricks on how to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please hit the subscribe button down there. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment and share with all your friends and family. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Of course, to start off a lemon meringue pie, we need a pie crust. So I'm gonna link here my video where I did all the experimenting on my pie dough. And that's where I figured out I could swap out coconut flour for bamboo fiber or oat fiber. And the reason I haven't done a lot of pies in general is because my pie crust was kind of high in carbs. So when you slice a pie, you slice it into eight. That would make it five grams of net carbs for this pie. But if you swap out the coconut flour for the bamboo fiber or the oat fiber, it ends up only being three net carbs per an eighth of this pie. So that's what I did. I already made my pie crust. So we just got to get it rolled out and chilling, and then we can start getting all the rest of our ingredients ready. Yesterday, I made five mini pies to figure out this recipe, and they need to chill for four hours. So it literally took me all day to figure out this recipe. But my final pie was delicious and I learned a lot. So I got lots of tips and tricks for you and what'll work and what won't. So I have a nine inch pie pan here. I'm definitely going to spray it. That's why I put this here because I always tend to forget and it will stick. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. If you wanna see a tutorial on rolling out a pie crust, I will link here my apple pie with this crust. That should do. I did notice that this dough is a little bit more finicky to work with than the one with coconut flour. It's like sticky, but crumbly at the same time. You just kind of push it back together as much as you can. And when we get in the pan, we'll form it up good. This pie is definitely best the day of, but I think if you make it late at night before the day, it should be fine too. But you can always make your dough a day ahead. You can even freeze this dough. You can make it in big batches. I've made a six times batch of this dough. See, it's much stickier than my other dough for sure. And I didn't even add that much water to this. Like I stopped when it was still kind of crumbly. So it's definitely a little bit stickier of a dough. But I definitely did my edges a little bit thicker than the inside because I wanted extra on the outside. So I'm gonna fold it kind of high above the rim. Add some to where you need it. See how I'm saying it's like crumbly, but it doesn't like to like stick to itself, but it's sticky. Definitely prefer working with my coconut crust, but if you use the coconut crust and do 10 slices, it's four carbs each. Just doesn't like to stick to itself. Ugh. You don't want to mess with it too much because the big thing is you want flecks of butter in here still, which using the bamboo fiber makes it really hard to tell, but there are flecks of butter in there. But it's such a white pie crust. I'm going to wash my fingers and then do the crimping edge because especially when your fingers are sticky, it's hard to do. So I am going to put this on a sheet pan. It just makes it easier to spin when we're par baking this. Definitely want to dock it. You can do a blind bake on this. I just don't have pie weights. So I just bake it like this, and sometimes it bubbles up a little bit. I've never had pie weights. I don't know why. I don't bake a ton of pies. I'm more of a cake girl. You definitely want to dock it all the way around and all the way on the bottom. I'm going to pop this into the freezer while our oven preheats to 375. You can also pop it into the refrigerator, but it needs to chill for at least 30 minutes in the refrigerator. While that's chilling, we can get all the rest of our mise en place, which means everything in its place. Because this is something that kind of goes pretty fast and you want to have all your ingredients ready to go so that you can assemble real quick. 
First thing we're gonna do is get the ingredients for our filling ready to go. And I have some explaining for it. There is no other sweetener you can heat up other than allulose for keto. Everything else, as soon as you cool it down, it recrystallizes. So unfortunately, you cannot use anything but allulose for this recipe. And with that, the original recipe, what I was going with, one cup of sugar, it says right on the allulose bag, I just noticed, one cup of regular sugar equals one and a third cup of allulose. I didn't use that much. I used only a cup and a quarter, but it all depends on your taste on keto. If you don't like super sweet things, you can cut it back to a cup or you can up it a little bit to a cup and a third. So I'm gonna measure out 200 grams. To that, the original recipe, the reason why this was so hard to do was because all lemon meringue pies have cornstarch in them. And cornstarch is not used by a lot of people on keto. When I first started keto, it was a complete no-no. Again, there's no keto ingredients. It's how many carbs, what fits in your macros, etc. I prefer not to use cornstarch, so I use arrowroot. And they're pretty much the exact same carb count, but cornstarch is actually more thickening. Oh, our oven's ready. We're gonna wait a little bit while longer though. Tip that when your oven goes off, it's usually still not regulated to the temperature you need. So I usually give it extra time, but you would need twice as much arrowroot to do the cornstarch job, but we can't use that much in general. So one tablespoon is nine grams and it's eight carbs. We're only using 15 grams, which is a tablespoon plus two teaspoons. That's where the bulk of our carbs come from in this pie recipe. That's 14 carbs-ish, but it's not an even number, obviously. So to do this with less arrowroot, because we can't have the carbs, I added some gelatin at the end. I tried a bunch of tests with xanthan gum, and what a mess, because it's just gloopy. Like, it's so hard to get anything to mix into it because it's just so thick. So at the very end, after on my fifth pie, I referenced my chocolate pudding recipe. So I'll link that up there for you. It's delicious. I referenced my pudding recipe and I figured this out and it came out perfect. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna put our arrowroot. This is kind of important, the order of operations here. I tried a bunch of different ways on this too, on how to get a nice smooth consistency. And the one recipe was perfect. This doesn't involve tempering egg yolks, which I always enjoy not having to do that. You whisk in your arrowroot into your allulose, and then we're gonna measure out our liquid and get our eggs ready to go. And you want everything else ready, so the butter and gelatin that we're adding to this. I'm just gonna wipe this out and use it for my egg yolks because I hate dirty a bunch of extra dishes. It's all going in there anyways. Next, we need our lemon juice, which is the other bulk of our carbs, which is about eight carbs for a half cup of lemon juice. We'll see how much we get out of this. I have a bunch of random pieces of lemon. I might not even have enough to get four ounces. So I do have my Santa Cruz lemon juice if I need to add a tiny bit more to this. I ended up using the lemon juice at my last pie because I was running low on lemons. And the fresh lemons definitely taste much better than the bottled lemon juice. I almost lost one of my lemons to my son. He would not stop saying ball, ball. He was bawling his eyes out, <laughs> wanting my lemon. Literally everything that's round is a ball to him and he wants it. He was trying to eat it. So because that's such a big lemon, I'm hoping I'll be able to get two more ounces out of it. Most doesn't even fit in my juicer. Oh, and I forgot to zest it. Ugh. So concerned about getting four ounces. Well, pretend I zested it. I'll zest it right into here. We got our lemon juice ready to go. The one recipe called for salt and salted butter. I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt in this mixture. I am using salted butter, but I think it will help the sweetness come out a little bit more and the lemon flavor. I thought they were kind of lacking and I looked at a bunch of different recipes and they all had the same amount of lemon juice. So I'm thinking maybe the salt will bring out the lemon flavor a little bit more. Okay, let's separate our eggs. I already have them out. It's easier to separate eggs when they're warm just because like the whites kind of get a little bit more liquidy. Okay, separating eggs. We're gonna separate into a separate bowl and then get them into our stainless steel bowl. 
You can do this with a hand mixer also, it'll work. But in case you break a yolk, you don't want all your egg whites in one basket because then they're not gonna whip up very well. Egg yolk into there. It's always easier if you don't break your egg yolk too because then they'll slide easier in there and you won't get a bunch of residue. Before you do another one, put it in your bowl. I do that a lot of times too. Forget to swap it over. And I'm like, oh, good thing I didn't break a yolk. Whoop, see that one broke, but we caught it in time. They also usually break easier when they're warm. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna get our pie into the oven, which I kind of forgot about, our pie crust. We're gonna bake this for 10 minutes. We're not gonna bake it for very long after we put the filling and meringue on because allulose burns and browns way faster than regular sugar. We want our pie crust pretty baked. We need to get our gelatin, so we need one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of cold water. And to that, we're adding one and a quarter teaspoons of gelatin. I'm not gonna use the wet teaspoon because it's just gonna end up sticking to it. So I gotta do two of these and one of the quarter. Now I use grass-fed beef gelatin. I'd recommend using that if you want this recipe to come out because beef gelatin and unflavored like Knox gelatin differ in their gelling power. So people who have tried my pudding recipe, some have failed because their pudding didn't set up. And this is the kind of thing you don't wanna gamble with because everything's gonna be put together and then you gotta slice it. And if it doesn't set up, you can't fix it. At least the pudding, you can rewarm a little bit and add more gelatin to. This, you won't be able to. So I definitely suggest beef gelatin. So that's ready to go. And I already have my butter weighed out. So this is 42 grams or three tablespoons of butter. It's already been sitting out, so it's nice and soft. It'll melt real easy in the recipe. The last thing we need is the water, which I'm going to use this once I dump the lemon juice in. So without the heat on, we are gonna add our lemon juice to this and whisk slowly. We're just trying to get that arrowroot combined in there and not, you know, clumpy. Okay, that's ready to go. Now we're gonna get 10 ounces of water. If you use warm water, this process will go faster, but you don't have to use warm water. I am gonna turn our pie crust. That will ensure that it bakes nice and evenly. So that's a cup and a quarter of warm water. I'm just weighing it because it's easier that way. Okay, so all our ingredients are ready, except for we just need some allulose, crema tartar, and salt for our egg whites. I am gonna measure out the allulose right now, just because I wanna have uninterrupted time stirring this. You don't wanna get interrupted, so wait until your pie crust is done and just have everything ready to go. So for the allulose, for the meringue is also kind of up to you on sweetness. I saw some meringues had a half cup, some meringues had three quarters of a cup. So the sweetness level can vary on your meringue also. I did 120 grams, which is three quarters of a cup, but basically it's less than that because it's not as sweet as sugar. This bowl ain't gonna be big enough. <laughs> what am I thinking? I'm thinking about the recipe I did yesterday, which was a smaller amount, so I needed all little containers. Trying to get the huge clumps in there. It just makes it more of a pain. Just sift that up. Okay, that's good. Ready to go for our meringue. So you need cream of tartar for this, three quarters of a teaspoon. So quarter teaspoon over there, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So I have that over here. That's all ready to go. Ready to get this pie going. The pie crust needed a little bit more time to brown, probably because we had it in the freezer for a little bit longer. So you just want to make sure it's kind of golden brown already and brown on the bottom. We'll be back when that comes out and we'll start our filling. So I put it on for another two and I just put it on for another minute. So I don't know why it's taking so much longer this time. When I bake my oat fiber, my oat fiber and coconut flour browns faster than most other flours. That's why. I've never made a blind baked pie crust without the coconut flour. So that's why it takes longer. See, you learn these things just by doing them. So that was at 15 minutes and it's just starting to get brown around the edges. It's crispy down at the bottom. So even though it's not brown, it's crispy. We are turning our oven down to 350 because on 375, 
it browned way faster. And you wanna cook it a little bit, the meringue solidified on top of the pie. Now that that's done, we can start our filling. This you kinda of all wanna do around the same time. Like you want the filling still warm while you're getting your meringue done, because that helps bind the layers together. So to this, we're adding our egg yolks, which I'm gonna get a spatula before I add that. Because we broke a yolk, we're gonna have to scrape that out of the bowl. Try not to get it all over the whisk. That's not gonna get in there. Okay, and after that's combined, you add your water slowly. Okay, now you put your burner on medium. I don't remember how it goes to 180, I think. I haven't done it on this either, so this is gonna be a test for me. But medium on your stove top, and you gotta keep whisking. It's kind of like making a pudding. You're just whisking this until it gets thick. It will get thick. I kind of like to use a digital thermometer just to know kind of where I'm at. Yesterday I took it to about 170 and it was nice and thick. I just kind of like to know how much longer I'm gonna to have to whisk. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more juggling than you because now I gotta get my mixer up here too. It's heating a little fast, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It's not gonna be as thick as a regular lemon meringue pie recipe. You just gotta remember that. It's just gonna be a kind of thick because we're adding that gelatin. Normal recipe has a third of a cup, which is 5.7 tablespoons. And we only added a tablespoon and two teaspoons. It's starting to get thick. I wanna make sure I take it as far as I did yesterday because I know that worked. I don't wanna stop too early because I did that in one of the tests. I think I stopped too early and then I ended up with liquid filling. See, it got thicker, so it's getting coated around the sides. I'm gonna strain it because it looks like I had some clumps of something in there. It's boiling, so we're gonna turn it off. Take it off, get this out of the way. Let's strain it. Can't do this left-handed. <laughs> so it gets pretty thick still, only with that little bit of arrowroot. So add our butter and our gelatin. Should be a puck now. Yep. And let that melt in there. I'm going to tent this a little bit so that the heat stays in. So we're doing an extra step here because we can't cook our pie very long. I found that heat in the, making basically a Swiss meringue helps with the meringue getting solid and nice. We're not gonna do it all the way, just a little bit so that the heat stays in. You wanna bring your water to a simmer. Then we're gonna actually add our allulose into here. I forgot about this part. You don't have to do this. You can just do the meringue as is, like just, you're gonna add your sugar slowly or your sweetener slowly as it whips to stiff peak. But like I said, I think it gets a better meringue consistency because we can't bake it for 20 minutes. Like the one recipe that didn't do this, baked it at 350 for 20 minutes. I tried cutting down the allulose and adding powdered stevia and then baking it longer, and I was able to do that, but my meringue never set up. So that did not work. I was hoping I was gonna be able to skip this step because it's kind of a pain. So you only want a tiny bit of water. You don't want it touching the bottom of your bowl, which it's very close. <laughs> and you're just gonna sit and whisk this until it's nice and warm. I did this exact same thing in my graham cracker and marshmallow cream recipe. I'll link that up there for you. I only did two egg whites for that. It was probably gonna take longer because there's so many more egg whites in there. But you just wanna whisk this until, my book said 145. I actually rewatched the recipe because I was going to make this. And online it says 160. It's basically, they're trying to have you cook your egg whites all the way but you're putting it into an oven for 10 minutes also. So, and you're putting it on top of hot filling. So it should be fine to only take it to like 140. 
We're gonna have to do a fast switcheroo here when I, this is done, get onto my mixer. The recipe actually said to put it into the pie crust and then paint your pie, but I feel like that's harder to do than just tenting a bowl. And plus we had our butter and gelatin to melt, so. I'm gonna give this a mix while I'm mixing this. <laughs> just wanna keep this moving so that it doesn't burn. The butter's almost melted in there, so. At 120. You'll know it's up to the right temperature when the egg whites are kind of liquidy looking now. Like they're not going to be like jelly, you know, like an egg white normally is. Basically, this is like pasteurizing your egg whites. Turn my water down a little bit. Getting a little crazy in here. They're pretty liquidy now. 150, 140. You see the consistency change. I think I'm cooking my egg whites. Meh. What you don't want to do. Yep. I cooked my egg whites. Gonna have to start over here. Be back in a few. Okay, this is what it's looking like. I only went to 140 because I did not want to waste another five eggs. But I had to switch to my stove top because I couldn't get my induction burner to stay at a simmer. So we're going to whip that with three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Hopefully our filling isn't too cool now. I was kind of trying to stir it at the same time while I was trying to get it to work on my induction burner. But an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and whip that into stiff peaks. Our filling, give it a stir. I was trying to stir it because I didn't want it to get a skin on it. Pour that into your pie shell. Kind of just like pudding. You don't want the skin on top. There's gelatin in it. Okay, I'm gonna tempt that a little bit more. I don't know how this is gonna work now, if it's gonna solidify or not on top, but stick to it. And the last ingredient is just our vanilla extract. Really doesn't take very long because your egg whites are so warm. I'm just gonna go a little bit longer because some of it isn't quite stiff peaks, but not too much longer. Sir, add in a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Stiff peaks, add it to our pie crust. Now, cause ours isn't as thick as a normal one. What I was doing was adding it to the edge first. Then plopping it in the middle. Round it up all pretty. And then do your little peaks. I'd say that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bake this for six minutes, turn it, and set it for another six, see if we can go 12. I'm hoping that just the 10, 12 minutes will be good to like set this meringue up. Into the oven. I let it go 12 minutes. Now, unfortunately, we have to let this cool at room temperature. And then once it's room temperature, we gotta throw it into the refrigerator to chill for about four hours. So I'll meet you back here when it's time to slice into this guy and give it a try. It's finally time to try our pie. It's been a little over four hours. And I believe it's set. Let's cross our fingers. Here's our pie. It did separate a little bit. It's jiggly, so I'm thinking it's set. That would be about 
half there. This is literally the worst thing to do on camera other than like flipping pancakes. <laughs> Make sure we're cut through good. The first piece always doesn't come out very good. We will see. Come on. Doesn't want to separate from the rest. Come on. Oh, that is lemon meringue pie. Not too much gelatin, so it's just set. That looks pretty awesome. Time to dig in, and I need a fork. <laughs> Definitely should be eaten the day of, because it's probably gonna get weepy. <laughs> but that's with any meringue. Like I looked up a bunch of different recipes, they all said day of, day of, because there's no way to stop the meringue from weeping. So it's not just keto meringue that does it. It is pretty blonde on the bottom. Probably could have baked it a little bit longer, but if you're using coconut flour, definitely don't need to cook that long. Let's give it a try. Mm, it is tangy. Definitely tangier than the last pie I made. So that salt definitely does make a difference. The meringue is fluffy and marshmallowy like, and the lemon is nice and fresh and tart. I'd say we did a pretty good lemon meringue pie. Mm. You've been missing your lemon meringue pie on keto. Three nut carbs for this big hunk of pie. Mm. It is definitely sweet and tart and soft, just like a lemon meringue pie should be. Mm. Super yummy. So I hope you guys enjoy this keto lemon meringue pie recipe. Let me know in the comments below if it's something that you've been missing and you're looking forward to making this. Let me know what other pies, now that we have this lower carb pie crust, I can get to making some more keto pies. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll be back with more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys. Happy Keto Baking!